The UBC is produced by Backgammon Galaxy. Play among the stars. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Hi there. This is the amazing team who made the UBC production that you're watching right now. You can support us by donating any amount using the YouTube Super Chat. Just click the dollar icon in the chat window to get started. Donate $25 or more to get our eternal gratitude. Donate $50 to get a personal shout out by Mark Olson in an exclusive video. Donate $100 to get a signed copy of the event poster and a shout out. Thank you so much for your support. Get the limited edition signed poster by donating $100 in the YouTube Super Chat. Your donations will support the hardworking team who made the UBC a reality. Thank you so much. What's up, Backgammon fans? Mark Olsen here with Nick Glacier. We've, we're heading into match two of the UBC Ultimate Backgammon Championship final, Mochi versus Dirk. The score was 2-0 for Mochi in match one, and uh, now we're heading into match two. So, Nick, uh, what do you think is going to happen from here? I don't know. From the first match, Mochi's playing really sharp. We kind of agreed that a lot of the positions in uh, on Dirk's side were very tough from that match. I know. <laughs> yeah, I think we got the... Awkward handshakes, perfect. Yes. Uh, yeah, I Mochi was wasn't sure to... about Dirk's pass either and the, the big mistake from that match, you know? Yes. So that's that's kind of the story of that one. If you Mochi, like to find it. Zero blunders from Mochi. Yeah. Two blunders, I believe, from Dirk. Okay. Uh, so remember, like two is just whether or not you make a blunder in the match. So I could still yeah. be 50 50, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so far, so good. Uh, I took the under, you took the over. <laughs> yeah. I think this is just still the natural opening for us. Uh, oh, this is funny. Nine. But now you have the four point made, which means you can make the rack with yeah. the making the five point. Yeah, yeah. So it it's, it's kind yeah. of makes the decision more interesting. But yeah. You're right. It's still just uh, still just must be, you know. Still just the standard play. No need to deviate. Yeah. Four one makes a nice blocking point. Now Mochi with ten in the zone oh. and a better board and anchor already has an interesting cube decision here. This um, could be a cube actually. Yeah, yeah. I think it seems very reasonable. It's just dominating in every way. That's right. But it's very early, so it should be a simple take for Dirk too. It's like a, a a a prime position, but slightly underdeveloped. So let's call it level one. He's yeah. got a level one blitz position. He's got mm -hmm. a level one race position. So he has an advantage, small advantage in all game plans. Yeah, yeah. Um, ooh, what do we do with the three? I don't think we want to. I don't think you want to be on the twenty here. It's just a little too risky. So you got to do something gross like dump to the three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. This is slightly too big. It seems to be a twenty-five millipoint mistake. Yeah. We have a little bit of the harsh blunder settings on here. Yeah, yeah. In our feet, the feet we're looking at. But it works sometimes like this. So he's happy after this this roll. I don't think you can link the blots in like it's. Just oh, you make the nine point actually. Do you? I, yes, I, would I not. think because you, of the gain of making the nine point, that's what wow. you got to do. Yes, look at this. XG confirms because there's a gain. It's not just a neutral move. Yeah. It's a, and you have the race lead, you have the inner board strength, mm -hmm. and you're doing a, something constructive with it. Yeah. So like all conditions for running off the anger. This is ugly. This is destructive. I mean, this is the standard play. Yeah. But he has such a stronger inner board here. Yeah. And a constructive move to make by making the nine points. It's just I so it's uncommon that you like leave your anchor. I mean, you're one roll away from regretting it severely. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, so you do this, Dirk makes a point behind you somewhere, and you don't escape cleanly. Like, you don't roll exactly a seven or 11. Um, you already regret your decision, right? <laughs> and that's just like so often the, the case with these holding games. But it's an interesting find when it links and makes a blocking point. The other That's thing right. that confuses it's, it's, me... It's actually huge that you make the nine point. But the, the nine point doesn't communicate well with it. You don't want that point in conjunction with the made three is the big issue with it for me. So it's it's really just two linked blots, and it's not a point that you want to keep. It's still just safe builders. Uh, like, it, you're excited to break it. Nah, that, like it still I would be serves, surprised if you found that uh, play. Mochi Mo Mo yeah. made a mistake here. Okay. Uh, I mean, I would have made the nine point for sure. Uh, mm. the, 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 the nine point is true that it doesn't connect with your three point. It's not really part of your prime zone. Yeah. But it still serves the, both the function of priming and the function of being safe landing for the checkers behind it. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's still a valuable point. Yeah. Anyway, let's see. 6-2 Six Six is a little two. awkward. What do yeah, we, I is. guess we just play behind. Is that really the best you if can do? Had the race been close, you would just play behind, so not get hit. Yeah, you're so far that you have to play thirteen to seven, though, huh? Yeah, 
That makes sense. I looked at the switch too, nine to seven. And that's, I guess you'd rather have the high points blocked in case he rolls fours or something like this. Um, but yeah, I feel like Dirk's gonna find this. This, I think, this is kind of a. I think I'm not sure. This feels like a natural holding game kind of theme that he would be aware of, but I'm not sure. It's really it's a function of the race. You do this when you're down thirty. If you're That's close right. in the race, exactly. then you keep it simple. If you're ahead in the race, then you definitely keep it simple. It's the fact that he's down yeah. in the race and the blood and the and now and two blocks in the board that you should play thirteen to seven. With such a huge race lead, you <laughs> do have an opportunity to run off the anchor. But again, same logic applies here, where it's just it's not pleasant to do. Um, so it's not clear to me, but you have to leave a shot no matter it, what. Now is yeah. the time. Yeah. Again, all the checkpoints on the checklist is is valid here. Yeah. You're up in the race. Yeah. And uh, any other move is destructive, mm -hmm. and you have an inner board advantage with a three point board versus one yeah. point board. And he has two bloods in the inner board, mm -hmm. so it, I think he's gonna find the the, the best play this time. It's he hard does. to give up the midpoint, and you don't want to give up the eight point before you've cleared the midpoint, so you can rule that out, making the ace or the deuce behind him. Um, yeah, so this is a good find. Yeah, good play uh, from Mochi. What do we do here? Do we hit and cover or something crazy like this, or do we just have to play quiet? And yeah, the hit and the cover looks like it no, wins. No, no, it, it, yeah, the hit and the I, cover, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The hit and the cover. Not by a lot. It's very close. It seems to be rather close. Yeah, yeah. I think most players would just play 13 to 6 here but it seems it's just the the racing problem and he left his anchor this is kind of your last chance right. like this is i mean understandable mistake here from dick yeah um tricky tricky position but the, the yeah. fact that he's so much down in the race he should have tried to fi make a fight for it there yeah start yeah. the fight and now mochi still has work to do to consolidate this uh dirk still has a fine position yes. just building his board on the way home, so uh, I don't think you want to leave it here, Mochi. Um, no, he's just going to play yeah. a standard holding game. The, he's going to uh, think about uh, it. Two strategy. blocks on board, right? So you got to right. think oh, about it. Oh, there we might see Dieck run off. So, by the way, this is a position type that I like to call a defined position because that this is what happens when one player fully escapes his back checkers. And now we're kind of going into a holding game situation, which is mostly right. just a race and there's some contact value. This is the natural play to me, too. Uh, we're still down in the race, so we want to keep the anchor in the contact. If you don't have space to hold it, you might have to do something like shift 20 to 15 and keep like weaker contact. That's but he's right. got plenty of room to play his fives, and giving up the mid's not a big deal. So, so I agree. Do this. Yeah. It's, uh, and the race here is the key. Mm -hmm. uh, had the race been, maybe he's been down five pips or something, then you probably come up to the fi 15 point to yeah. find the balance where you maximize both, both racing value and contact value. But he's going to be down 18 pips after this move. It's yeah. just too much. Yeah. You know, he needs to stay back. Yeah. He's looking at the dragon with the tail move. Mm. Where this you is an interesting keep play contact in the behind. outfield and leave a one man holding game. This is usually not the right idea. This the tends to be more the right idea when they have the like actual dead checkers already. That's right. The, the problem is that right. uh yeah, he doesn't, so he can still be closed out and lose a gammon if he just gets unlucky. And yes. that might just mean he rolls like a 4-2 and covers two points and you can't escape. Same thing from the opposite side. And yeah. now you really regret leaving the contact. So. I agree. Yeah. He finds the right play. Good play, Dirk. Yeah. He realizes this is not the this yeah. is not the, the conditions for a dragon with a tail move. What is this? Is this 13 to 12 with three? I, and make the yes, eight? that's yeah. exactly it. Again, had the race been closer, you would make the 11 point in yeah. order to prime but that's not the case here. He's up this. 22 pips. Three to two, you just make a racing play instead yeah. of uh, making the ace. I thought maybe you don't want the blot behind in some iterations. It's it's more race efficient yeah. with three to two. Yeah. And this true. is just mostly a race. He's yeah. not looking to, to win by priming or blitzing here. I'm interested to see if Dirk can find his, his A game in this uh, match too. I know he's not feeling happy with his performance in the last game. He was disappointed. Uh, last match, yeah. He, there's some plays that he felt like he should find. The QB didn't, you know, it was confusing to both players. Mm -hmm. um, but he mm -hmm. also, he just seems not as most comfortable. Like like maybe, um, like he doesn't feel like he's playing his A game. And I don't know if that's just results oriented from the last one, you know? I think it's a combination of him having a very difficult match and match one syndrome. Yeah. I think uh, Mochi has been in this final twice before. It's his third time. Yeah. Uh, so I think Six, Dirk just needs seven. to warm up. I definitely expect Dirk to come back super strong and still achieve yeah. a, a sub three mm -hmm. PR average, even on the yeah. UBC settings. Don't you feel like in this match, he's kind of looking at some plays that maybe you wouldn't think he would need to look at the same way? 
Uh, you know, it just, good I don't question. Know. I don't yeah. know. It feels a little bit like he's uh, not certain like he is sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? So Could be. Difficult but, to say. So that was another four pick and pass. Yeah, yeah unlucky, yeah. unlucky swing for Dirk here in this yeah. position. But what he's accomplished by waiting to run off that anchor until this point is that it's very difficult to lose a gammon now, of course, because pips have all come around. So you wait till that four six forces you off. There's only four pips outside. You know, worst case, a few percent of gammons that you give up. So yeah, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's coming home pretty natural for Mochi. Okay, entering's fine. He can nice. prepare his board. Not really a big difference there. But I'm sure he afford. Okay, and no gammon, so I'm just clearing. I think I don't think the race is close enough where I need to worry about a joker. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good play. Yep. Yes. So when there's no, not really any gammons to fight for anyway, yeah. why would you take a risk? Mm -hmm. Just clear from the rear mm -hmm. and ask no questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Four is going to make it easy. A 2-0 lead for Mochi here in match two. The most common score. <laughs> so far, it's right. You know? <laughs> two out of two so far. They got the unlikely with that cube mistake. They got to the unlikely, you know, like single point win. Um, so we got off the beaten path a little bit last match, but uh, yeah. yeah, there's the resign. Yeah, there's yeah. no need to to roll on. Actually, we play with uh, gentleman rules with regards to PR point chasing. Ah, yeah. So yeah. if there is no real decisions, yeah. then they are uh, obliged to simply just uh, resign. Oh, uh, that's a good rule. I was wondering about that because there are decisions there. And it's just like an annoying feature of the PR calculation, you know. Yes, exactly. You can sometimes you can wait and see, stay in your opponent's home board to oh. try to save a backgammon and have a decision Dirk there. made a really great play here, by the way. Sorry, you missed it. He tried to award himself the two points uh -huh. <laughs> from that game, but was unsuccessful. Um, Mochi caught it. Oh, he tried to keep the cube too? Man, he yeah. doesn't get away with anything. <laughs> it's just Mochi's too sharp. All right, two down, standard two down. open. Yep. Yes, aggressive opening from Dirk. Yep. Putting ammunition down to the zone. He gets punished, unfortunately. Yeah. The PRs are looking good so far. Yeah. One point X for both players. More natural plays. Mm -hmm. You never come in on the 24. You know, that would have been a way to hit. What uh, about this one, Nick? Are we yeah. making the anger or hitting loose? This is tricky. You've got less checkers back, so why do you want to, like, maybe equalize that? I'm more inclined. And look at this. Oh, it's, it's fine. Close. It's close. Yeah. Okay. yeah, because the problem is here that you often end up getting primed a bit. Yeah. The, oh, now it works out quite right. nice with the three point. Oh, oh it's going to no, make the anger. Point. That's yeah. going to be okay. It's still yeah. a pretty good roll. Yeah. But you just end up getting primed a bit on the three on the twenty two point when he, when Dirk yeah. makes his nine point. That's a. And it's a, nice a, and efficient, just on stacking and hitting. On that's the a point. theme that Dirk was talking about that he makes an error with too often. He likes to make the twenty two too often and doesn't run it off and often enough. This must make the nine and the four, right? What what is the? Oh, this is White's roll. My this bad. White's roll, so he so has again. the chance he Ooh. can hit. Or he can build. So Mochi is really thinking about this one. This is the I reason this is difficult because they're so different in game plans, these two different But it's moves. additionally now you can shift from the twenty two to the twenty two. Yeah. Like this, this is, is a real this decision. Is, this is a really so, powerful, powerful move. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever looking at the hit and I already saw in the X G feed that, that comes up on top. The hit comes up on this, top. This uh, so he's found the best wow. non hitting iteration. The the thing is that the and race he's is look at the it. race wow. is really close. This yeah. this uh do you ever find oh, creating the, another blot, the 13? Oh, duplication. duplication. Yeah, okay, duplication you can get cost. away with it. Yeah. And the thing is, like, in the early middle game, you need to unstack the midpoint. Yes. It's so crucial. Yeah. It's really, really crucial. And we see mm -hmm. that here. You get the duplication. Uh, I mean, at least he found the hit. Uh, he's just found the wrong variation. Yeah. A <laughs> the, wrong variation that is worse than not hitting. Yes. <laughs> it's because the, the race is so close. That's yeah. why the gain of a hit is huge. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, Mochi is the one with the racing advantage. What's our best six? I think we just want to provoke contact with our anchor. So coming out to the 15 seems fine. This strips our mid, but That's when you the have problem. the bar point, it's yes. okay to give that up. Small so. mistake from Dirk. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It yeah. would have been so much nicer to make this play if you had four checkers. Yeah. Uh, so you didn't have to strip the midpoint early. That's something we try to avoid doing. What is this? Yeah, we must just have to make a point. Yeah. I think this is fine. This is fine. Yeah. 
It's a you could uh, probably the beginner play is to link up to the six, right? Oh um, yeah, yeah, it's that's just ugly. too stiff. It's too stiff. Yeah. yeah, you're creating two sacks. Four three points on head, so of course we could have come around and hit, but we want to keep our anchor. Yes. Yeah, so now Dirk is yeah. taking the lead in the PR. Ooh. Oh, and a fan. Always stop to think when your opponent fans. That's what Dirk yeah. is doing here. Is and this a double seven away, five away, we must be able to think about it, but it's four checkers back against one. Yeah, yes. it's just... It's a bit too early. He's too underdeveloped still. Yeah, that's a nice shot. Yeah. He's down in the race, 11 pips. Yeah. So you kind of need two out of three advantages in the offensive game plans yeah. in order to have a cube in the, in the middle game. Now with nothing on the bar and still more checkers back, you must have market losers when you make the five point, and there's some of those rolls, but... Uh, he's not on the bar, but at least he's yeah. not down in the race anymore. Now yes. he has an even race mm -hmm. and he's kind of like he's not really priming he's not really blitzing but he's kind of like halfway in between on both game plans mm. like he could prime here if he makes the five point yeah but he could also go for a blitz attack if he gets like a six four or something and hits on the ace point we got closer but we're not we quite closer. there yet yeah, yeah. yeah and of course plus plus might change that and he t i think he tends to find these cubes when they're right on the borderline like this yeah the thing is the computer plays these second. middle game cubes very well so i would be surprised it could switch but i would be surprised if i think it did. dirk's tendency is early here we see anything. the xg plus yeah it's the same evaluation yeah um Dirk is shaking and of course there's the match score as well right if if well, it was trailing so yeah that's, that's right that's it, yeah exactly if yeah. it wasn't equal score neutral score then yeah. it's a bit too early oh this is interesting I hate playing to the three. I'm tempted <laughs> to think about 13 to 11. Me too. This is very reasonable. But it seems to be a big mistake, actually, to do this. Uh, yeah. That was my instinct play as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, 62. I don't know. It's not a blunder yet, so we're still blunder-free. Yeah, we're still blunder-free. Oh, three, six. Oh, wow. He just lost his market. Yeah. Didn't he? 11 checkers in the zone, up yeah. 13 pips. Yeah. yeah, he lost his market. That's this quite a, a... 115 on three ply. Let's see. But we can plus. see why it's not the cube either, or not a cube the roll before either, because he hasn't lost his market by that much, That's even right. when this like really spectacular sequence occurs. You know. Completely true. Yeah. The market lo losing sequences were not hugely market losers. Yeah, yeah. And you might even, I mean, you, you he's Could actually giving it. Yeah, yeah, he's actually giving it. It's yeah. not a trivial decision here. No, no. We're kind of taking it for granted that it's a pass, but just because we see the XG, you know. Yeah. My instinct was to pass, but over the board, this can be a difficult decision. It's a two and a half point board, but you kind of almost have to treat it like a three point. You know, I mean, even if he doesn't make the five, some some of the numbers are just going to point on the two and turn into a true blitz. That's it's right. Like, like 11, six four, double yeah. four ish. A lot kind of, of ammunition, moves. yeah. And you're on the bar. It's just you have no offense really. I don't know. It's tough. This is a tough decision. Yeah. Let's see the XG plus analysis. Uh, from Hussein, there it is. Yep. Yeah, it confirms it's still the same, yeah. more or less the same evaluation. Mm -hmm. That is, if Dirk's tendency is to send a cube early, then Mochi's is to take. I know that. There so is blunder he potential. Thinking here. about this, yeah. There's blunder potential here for Mochi's. Yeah. It's not going to be a big blunder, of course, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's not difficult. So we evaluate the priming potential here for uh, for Dirk. It's there if he makes the five point. It's not the purest prime because of the three point made, but. There's mm -hmm. priming potential. We evaluate the blitzing potential. That's powerful, right? That's the st mm -hmm. strongest asset here. 11 yeah. in the zone. Mochi is sitting on the bar. He has the, the five point slotted. And he has a 13 pip lead. Yeah. Not a super dominating pip lead, but still pretty, yeah. pretty big. It's hard to have such good blitzing potential with three checkers back like this. And I'm sure that's part of what's confusing Mochi. Yes. Um, but I mean, it's very forward for that three back with the mid gone and the 11 made. That's know? right. Yeah. Uh, and what's also making the difficult for Mochi here is the fact that he actually has some offensive power as well with mm -hmm. the three point made. Uh, yeah. Okay, he drops he very, very good pass by Mochi. Very good yeah. pass. And it might actually be one of those where the match score is like it's borderline for money and the mm. match score being up 2 0 to 7. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Yeah. Swings it, it into being a It looks a small like it. Blunder. Like it's probably still a take for money. And so you had to figure out if it was enough of a swing yeah. to score. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's, it's rather close for money. Yeah. 3-1. It's always a great start. The best. <laughs> Six away, five away is one of those scores where I don't know specifically how I adjust it all. Those are the hard ones. <laughs> it's the, the five away player is threatening to win four points and go to Crawford. 
Yeah. So that's like, oh, three, two, this is funny. Yeah, I think Dirk knows this one. I think this is how you play it. Yes, yeah. well played, Dirk. The thing is, he already started a good priming game plan. So yeah. you don't want to make two impure moves. You don't want to make the blitzing move, a double hit. Just mm -hmm. play it pure. Very interesting, yeah. Six, Bring one. checker in the zone, too. Could he play anything else then? 24, 18 here, Nick? Uh, I... Is that the, really the move? It can't be that different when he's down in the race wow. already. Wow, good keep the play, anchor. Mochi. Yeah, yeah. I think I would have made a mistake here. Yeah, that's a tough one. Because the six duplication is not that strong. There's a little bit of six four duplication. Yeah, that it's not always it. about duplication though. It's about uh, he needs to cover in yeah. offense, and you don't want to like be blitzed, and you, you got to start an offense of your own. So, yeah, yeah. It's not just you're right. Yeah, yeah. That was a good move by Mochi. Yeah, yeah. He's well just n not showing any signs of weaknesses so far. Yeah, now I don't think you want to take the last checker off, though. So are we running out from the front or splitting? I think with the uh -huh. checker behind, maybe you can split. Maybe 24 18 is okay because he has to cover. So you're not going to get like double hit, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, we actually see the equities here, yeah. which means that it's a double pass no matter what he does. Oh, that but didn't even occur to me. But it, but is, it is the split, though. Yeah. The, it is the split, yeah. It's yeah. Mochi's position is just so weak here. It's completely yeah. underdeveloped in his front position. Mm -hmm. It's stacked, and then he's got getting blitzed and primed, actually. And, <laughs> because uh, Mochi has a strong blitz uh, position, and yeah. he's still pure and efficient, which yeah. is also good for a prime. It is just a very, very powerful position for Mochi. It is fun, or for Dirk, you mean. Oh, yeah. sorry, for, for, for Dirk. But he does have four blots around. It's kind of interesting. But uh, the fun part is that Dirk's getting all this free time to think about the cube decision now <laughs> that when as soon as Mochi picks his play, you know it's coming, right? He's going to be ready. <laughs> Little does Mochi know that yeah. he ha he's going to have a pass either way. But yeah. it, if, if in and case he takes next time, then it actually yeah. matters which play plays he makes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the... Like a common trick is when you spend a bunch of time thinking about the play, then you're kind of like more inclined to take afterward, right? Oh. Why did I, why did I waste all this time? Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to pass. <laughs> feel like you owe it oh. to yourself, you know? Yes. It's a trap. I can't see what the numbers are to see uh, how, what the size of the pass is going to be. This is, it seems to be the worst option. But yeah, like, yes. so the slotting play is interesting when it unstacks, when it strips your midpoint, not so much, you know? I agree. It yeah. it's t typically needs to unstack. Mm -hmm. You also typically needs to want to have to play, a, you want to play the priming game plan, yeah. which you do here because you're down in the race. Mm -hmm. And uh, there needs to be duplication usually as well. Mm. That's interesting. I'm not usually looking for the duplication necessarily, but... Uh, that is a, I'm certain, a feature. It makes sense. Early game and the middle game, Yeah. all your slotting plays usually need to be backed up by duplication. Yeah. Uh, but, but we just saw an exception to that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's more like an empirical yeah. observation rather than yeah. uh, a physical, or what do you call it? like uh, A law. Yeah. <laughs> game <laughs> strategy. And he finds the best play. And yeah. of course, Dirk's already decided it's yes, a cube. Very, and we'll very see if Mochi's decision. decided what he's doing yet. Dirk has a super easy decision here. It's Still always going to be a cube. Too. Still a blunderless match. Yes. Yeah. So far you're doing good. We, I was going to say, we could end up at 75% and Mochi takes. How big is it this? Takes. It doesn't okay, surprise me. It see. doesn't, it, oh. I can't tell if it's, uh, is that break even? It's like is 3 million points. We need to see XG plus. I can't and tell. And we can't really tell the numbers too well. Yeah, yeah. Let's see who's signed. Oh, no, My we get a blitzing roll, 5-2. That makes sense that it's this close. He must feel good about thinking about it then. Fifth. Yeah, ten seventy six. It must be pretty borderline. I think you're. I think you want to go for the blitz here. Five two. Yeah, is yeah. Over. You want to go else for can the you blitz. Do? You can just hit on the bar point, but then you leave all these returns. Yeah. Is you this could, even safest? Oh, this is an interesting. Oh, that option. one. Yeah, fifteen yeah, million point pass. So yeah. it's very close. It's very yeah. very close. I appreciate that take. Well, yeah, me too. Yeah. Well done, uh, Mochi. And the, the game is definitely uh, has decision on both sides. Yeah, the A splits is best, okay. Every time Mochi doesn't get a decision here, every time he gets blitzed, he's not making any mistakes, which means all the mistakes are going to come on Dirk's side of the board, yeah. which leans towards the take. Is this start? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what is the rule there? Does Mochi have to tell him? <laughs> uh, the, the transcriber has to tell oh, him. Okay, yeah. Hosein Paknahar. This is interesting. He's not even looking at 14 to 7 to me. Like, that seems like uh, a candidate play. But, but I, I can it, see why it's it worse. It leaves so but, yeah. many good shots to your opponent. Yeah. Directs from the roof. I mean, this does the too play. is the thing. No, much less. Much less good shots. Uh, what is that? That was a 2-5? Two 2-5, five? Two five, yeah. Great That's shot. A great shot. Great yeah. shot. 
I'm gonna uh, neutralize the position pretty well. This is just gonna link blocks, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And we end up with a much more boring position where yeah. DX simply just got the racing lead. However, oh, um, oh until he uh, rolls that six two. Yeah, he can't yeah. really. Even though he likes contact, uh, no. he's down in the race. You gotta do it. I was about to say that Dirk has the added benefit of having an extra check to, checker to attack back, but so mm. like that's a great role to fix that. But now this is just a, a really great bar point holding game. You know, there's yes. no liabilities. So. Well, he has that liability. He's getting hit now yeah. with uh, <laughs> this back checker's getting hit. That was his oh. only liability. Sorry, no liabilities yeah. for Mochi other than the race is what I mean. Ah, He's for Mochi. I, okay, this. sorry. Yeah. yeah. Four one. Start some points. Eventually, he's got to make an offensive point. That's very important. Yeah, that seems better. The PR raised 2.x for Mochi, 1.x for Dirk. So he seems to be picking up his so. pace now, Dirk Schiemann. Yeah, I think you do have to just make a racing play here. Uh -huh. It's always weird it's looking a cool to play. break a five. Cool play yeah. from, from Dirk. He realizes this is a holding game. It's all about the race. He doesn't yeah. need to be blitzing. He doesn't need to be priming. So he just finds the most flexible and race efficient yeah. move there is. 3-6 clears a point. Yeah, it might look like it's a landing point for the mid, but it's going to be difficult to clear later. Yes. So this is a good opportunity. That's exactly right. Yeah. But this is the kind of situation when Mochi has just such a, a like, simple bar point holding game that, like, Dirk should be sad to have sent the cube. You know, that's kind of what I was talking about before, too. No liabilities. This is just a... Everybody's kind of happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think definitely Mochi is more happy than Dirk. I don't know. Since he survived the, the blitz. Oh, now he's got a fives is winning the race and he's oh, holding wow. the game. Oh, wow. He's up seven pips now. Dirk is very oh, sad. Oh, one pip. He's up one pip. But of course he needs to run oh, when okay. it's one pip. So, yeah. so Dirk is like a, what is it, like a 56% favorite here in the race or something like this. Small favorite yeah. because he's on roll. Which is probably almost exactly even equity wise. Yeah, because of the cube position. Yeah, yeah that's, you're right. It's completely mm -hmm. even. And it seems like to be. Yeah. Okay, 6 4. That's a great shot. Nice. Um, something interesting that Dirk uh, investigated in his book, I haven't read the chapter yet, but was uh, it was the rollout with less than optimal play strength in the rollouts. Yeah. So he basically took positions mm -hmm. and then he rolled them out first with high uh, play settings and then he loaded to three ply, loaded to two ply, and he just saw. So given that the, the each side were now playing suboptimal, mm -hmm. what the rollout results would be. Yeah, and he found some really interesting things. I'm really looking forward to reading that chapter. Yeah, what uh, I'm, I feel like I probably have read that already, but I'm not sure. Do you remember any of the findings or? Uh, Mochi so just turned this I think round, for, by the way, and I think for he instance, is going to have a recube. Oh but, wow, oh, six double is sixes, okay. Right back in. okay. <laughs> yeah, that's back in. Yeah, let's just talk about the book. For, <laughs> for instance, the cube we had in this game, where Mochi yeah. he took a borderline pass. Yeah. But it seems to be that most of the hard decision was on the side mm -hmm. because sometimes Mochi gets splitsed. And sometimes he survives the blitz and he has a holding game. Yeah. Either way, Mochi's not going to have too many uh, tough decisions. Yeah. There are, of course, the ones where Mochi survives and then maybe he gets into priming Dirk and he has to play some sort of priming or containment. But for the most part, it's just either getting blitzed or playing a holding game, you know? Yeah. And uh, this definitely affects the, the future equity uh, yeah, yeah. Of, of the game. Yeah. So from a practical point of view, I think Loving maybe pips. this was a big take for Mochi, actually. And wastage. Oh, it's just two pips. Okay. I keep getting confused. No, he missed the redouble here. 53 yeah, millipoints. Aha. The wastage. Aha, um, wastage and yes. also the score with like the the recube threat is much less, you know what I mean? Um, that's it's not as valuable as so I Yeah, send that's the true. Recube here. That's yeah. true. So what's the take point? The take point is something like It's not that it's super low here the, the take point for Yeah, I'd have to calculate game. it. I don't remember off the top yeah, of my head. Yeah, me neither. Uh, mm -hmm. he just lost his market here. He just lost his market. Yeah. But not by a lot here. This is still takeable too, you know. It's going to be a tough decision for Dirk, that's for sure. Good cube, like good cube from Mochi. Very clear to him. It's a gamonless position. He's threatening to go to Crawford. Yeah. So it's like... It's one of those positions where I think the doubling... I think actually the leader can redouble more aggressively here mm. because he can get to Crawford while the trailer can get to two away, five away. Logically, it makes some sense, but I, yeah, I don't remember the numbers well enough to be certain. Yeah, yeah, you would have to crunch the numbers here. Yeah. That's what Dirk did in his book, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Calculating uh, take points and doubling points. 
I wonder how much of that he does over the board in a spot like this. That's I think, a uh, great question. He knows he has feels for all these scores very clearly, and he's yes. going to look through it and understands. Um, but he also understands these races and the odds of like what the recube is actually worth. So he's very familiar with what it means to hold a four cube and potentially. Send I would an eight say here. that there's nobody in the world who is more familiar actually at with this moment as, yeah. than Dirk when it comes to take points, doubling points, mm. recube uh, value, all those stuff. I bet, like from a pure, John O'Hagan is very studied in that stuff too. Um, he and he he does the math over the board. I think when he needs to. I, I think specifically with these higher cubes and like, w again, what it means to send a four to eight cube at this kind of score, I think he's probably studied that recube vig maybe more than anyone, okay. you know, specifically. Okay, might um, be. The I take just, point, I bet like John knows, to, I don't think you can know it more than him. Either you know it or you don't. I mean, <laughs> if, if I was sitting at the board here, I yeah. would calculate my take point, which yeah. is uh, a risk reward calculation. You figure out sure. what's your risk. And in order to figure out what the, the risk reward ca is, you have to know the match mm -hmm. equity table. And then for that, I use Neil numbers to estimate what yeah. my percentages are at the, the different scores. Yeah. So that's kind of like the algorithm. First, you use yeah. Neil's numbers to figure out what's your match equity chance at the different mm -hmm. potential scores, and then you figure out your risk and your reward, mm -hmm. and then you divide, divide your risk with the risk plus reward, yeah. which is the basic odds ratio uh, formula, yeah. and then you find your take point. But that's a long, complicated process. I think that's what Dirk do is doing here, actually. I think he's calculating the actual take I, point. I actually doubt that for some reason. I think... Um, so that's that's how you get it when you're when you're not playing for a lot of players and most players have like seen this and kind of remember like have a good ballpark if not accurate estimate of what it is already, and what that turns out to be is still the dead cube take point. It doesn't take into account. That's right. That's that you right. Might send oh, it back. he passed a very good pass from yeah. Dick. Very good pass. And this is passes. again, I think what he's thinking about. Yeah. I think like a very relevant piece to it is how often he's going to send it back and how much it's going to matter that he sends it on eight. Partner, pack your board and head on down to the 9th Texas Backgammon Championships, February 9 to 13 at the Gunner Hotel, San Antonio. See you there. And gains yes. the bonus two points and turns it into a one-game match. You know. Yes. Um, and again, like I just, I think he just, he's done the work on that more than anyone else that I know, as far as I know. You know, he's got I, a book published about it. I so. think you're right. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I think he's just on a higher level. Yeah. I'm just. Uh, calculating all these yeah the recube value and stuff like this yeah i used to think you know like calculating the take point was complicated enough you know but not for Duke, right? <laughs> no. you got to figure out the recube I think you're right. degree I of accuracy too yes look at this finds the leading score split I like it with and he has many good finding in his book by the way i learned oh, yeah. several yeah. things just discussing these topics with Dirk the last couple of days yeah uh, how the the recube vic is not a static number. It's yeah. a function of your winning chances and the position type and all that stuff. Yeah. Super interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you're into backgammon theory, you you gotta read yeah. Dick's new book. Dick's new book. What is this? Thirteen to eight for sure. I would think. This that is play, a strange that's play. A, that hurts my eye a bit. And I'm not even sure you want to step into this. With yeah. That, no. Split. That's oh. That's. Why? That's not right. You already unstacked the six point. You already made a priming point. You want to unstack the midpoint. Yeah. yeah so sure like like he, thirteen to eight, mm -hmm. six to two made more sense to me. But the, yeah. again, there wasn't the right play either, right? I for yeah. even forgot to look at what the right play was because two was down. Just, uh, oh, two down made a lot of sense. Oh, to me. two down. Uh huh. Yeah. Duplicating just the force. All yeah. Duplicating the force. Nice. Yeah. Oh, is it duplicating? Oh, play? was he? Did he fan? Uh, it would seem so. No, sorry, he wasn't duplicating force. But yeah. uh, no, 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 that was a okay. The one so wrong. somehow Mochi fanned, and we're hitting with the ace and the five. I guess I, or sorry, yeah, Mochi. So it's either come out or come down. Yeah. D how much does coming out help us though? Feels like we just kind of capitalize on a blitz kind of situation and play down. I would say it does help us a bit. You can either escape or you can make the anchor if we come out. I yeah. think coming down is is the oh, other way around close. where you're not yeah. really gaining all that much. It's just material for just a blitz material. is yeah, what I'm thinking. That's right. But, uh, it's material, but you're not gaining any new numbers to cover. I wonder it could change by score too. This is one yes. where three away, six away, you're not that incented to play for a gammonish kind of play, and you that, just want to play true. for wins. That's true. I so think it's still. I think it's still the right play to come out, but you're right. Yeah. I think it swings it to be even more. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is the concept of connectivity during blitz. Yeah. 
I, and we, this is just a dominating position that Mochi is yes. not going to be able to send the cube at because of the score. That's right. It's uh, you can see that it's like probably getting closer to the pass side um, for money, um, but Good. at this score you just have to be winning consistently, and it can't be like your equity can't be coming from gammons, or it's just too good to take the the cube and whip yes, it back right. when you turn it around a little that's bit right. and cancel their gammons. So, and that's a great return. That's yeah. a great return. Yeah, M yeah. Mochi just want to go for the undoubled gammon. Wow, just making the four appear to be right with the twos. That's a weird play. Okay. Okay, so making the force was better. I think maybe it's because you have the 11 point mate. So we get that yeah. into that constellation where you have yeah. the, the open five point, but the 11 point mate. Yeah. It, where it works really well as a builder and attacker. Yeah, this is a great shot for Dirk. Oh, wow. And yeah, even with three. three checkers back, he's got to start thinking oh, about it. Oh, yeah, because of the, the match score. score. Six, oh, that's fast. And that was whips. fast. He knows that he wants to, he might lose his market. He sees that, a way. So he's I mean, I like it. I think it's good. Yeah. But that was very fast. With three checkers back and such a good board, it's not so clear to me. But uh, yeah, he sure did find that quick. Yes, the match score indicates you want to be aggressive in yeah. a gammonish position. But for money, this is this even a cube? Oh, I don't think it's a cube for money. Then it must be a take. It's kind of like the the simple real sub. That that's a know? good rule. Yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah. It kind of um, shifts the strategy one yeah. step. Yeah. Never more than a notch. Like maybe at four away, two away at the most sensitive scores, but six away, three away is not one of those. It's yeah. a sensitive score. Yes. It's not like the most. It's one so. notch. Yeah. It's not more than that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I agree. So yeah. for that argument, mm -hmm. I think with, with I'm on the take side as well. Yeah. Yes, it's a take. It's a Dirk's take. comfort with these things is It's not a huge impressive. take, but it's a pretty clear yeah. take. 81? I can't tell uh -huh. for sure. 5-2 yeah. mm -hmm. hitting. Very nice. That's a valid roll. Yeah. And this was a market losing sequence for it sure. It was. So he's happy to have gotten it in. 6-3. How do but we continue might, this? I think you build the, the, the 7. Yeah, yeah. Exactly yeah. like this. Exactly yeah. like this. Good play. You sure. fight for the edge of the prime so your opponent doesn't anger up on the edge of, on yeah. the, edge of the prime. It you feels like there's a lot more risk than usual in hitting loose on the edge, though. Like I'm the this the six to yeah. three wasn't as clear to me. But, but still, it it's yeah. just the efficient. Uh, yeah. Well, this play. is a great shot. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Now Diego's in a dominating position, and he's up. He's up 13 pips right before this roll. Yeah. He doesn't Ooh. have the same gammon threat that he used to have. No. Like Mochi's like conserved a lot. So. It's still a gammonish position because yeah. he's priming for back checkers. Yes. It could turn into a. a a poorly timed back game for Mochi, actually. Yeah. Mochi doesn't want to get trapped in a back game here when the race is so close. It's kind of like we saw in match one, actually. Yeah. Mochi had a similar This is really interesting, yeah. Scenario. Making the 18 is a play, and he okay. skips over it. I looked at that. A small mistake, 14. 14 to 11. Yeah, they're 14 all very close. Point. I wasn't sure how you would pick between those, yeah. but what an interesting decision. Now Mochi starts to prime. Uh, it's not that effective because of the advanced anger of Dirk and the fact that Mochi is getting... Oh, what a powerful double four. Look at that. Now he's got the nine point as well. Yeah. Mochi needs to roll a five here so he can liberate some of his back checkers. That's wants to, this is fine. That's he's okay. He's going to give up on the... It's not a back game. No. Nope. There's not enough that's timing right. for it. So he's going to try to find a way to play that 22 point anchor game. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be difficult though. Desperately needs a five. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it looks like a natural play for Dirk. Small micro mistake, so it's probably completely. Four one, yeah, we see the light. This That's not a bad roll, actually. No. Yeah. Now he has di diversified his numbers to escape his back checkers. Yeah, four Five. three, the hit. Okay. Hitting is interesting. interesting. I didn't really think about that. I might have just played simple. Ah, but, good uh, play. Great good find. Play. Yeah. Easy find for him too. That's He's trying. I think maybe there's actually a lot of crunching numbers after the hit. Ah. Because that you come makes in sense. with one and then. Yeah. You have to play the other one. Look at this. The oh, six out nice. is automatic too. Okay. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. I think that's a nice play. Yeah, it's yeah. very good. Yeah, I would have to, had to at least think about covering. Oh, is he still thinking about it? Oh, okay. he's thinking about yeah. well, it. Is thinking about best days. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly. You need to come out with the six. It's yeah. just otherwise you're running low on mobility that and choice. you might crunch. Oh, okay. Not quite cracking. No. He holds. Uh, six is to cover. Right? Oh, yeah. So this is just going to cover the deuce? Why not? Yeah, probably. Yeah, keep pressure on the outfield. Should he hop out? The oh six? wait, does it make sense to leave the blood there? Uh, now oh, that Mochi has three three back checkers, uh, three blots in his inner board. Yeah. No. Okay. Seems like an overthink, but it's uh, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> but that's 
Three, two, I guess we're gonna either, yeah, it's either the eight or the, I guess for some reason the first thing I saw was the five, but that's too hard to repair. Um, yeah, but you, he's gonna leave it soon, so you, it's You wanna okay. clear the seven point here or the eight point, but you can't because then you leave shots, so he has to leave. No, you can leave. Oh, you, you, can, can, you can clear the five. I have yeah, eight the eight point, point you're right. Safe, you're yeah. right, you're right. Yeah, so of but course I like this idea, that. trying yeah. to cover it and generate some contact value. This just feels weak. Here you, know? here you have better flexibility, mobility. Yeah. You have spare checkers, and it's more pure because you don't, destroy the the five point yeah uh, right. and when it's you're so down up. in the race you're yeah. trapped behind the prime you want to play pure you don't want to play yeah. impure it's going to be very difficult to repair that too yes so very that's difficult the play. to play safe going forward even you know he was so. just he was just having a look yeah yeah <laughs> i saw it too though i don't know why that yes. play stuck out to me i was like uh -huh. i gotta cover two blots sometimes maybe you know um okay we can make two points maybe threaten to attack should he hop out yeah like this yeah yes Aces, okay. Aces just Dirk's a master of these, I'm telling you. He's going to roll enough to crack. <sighs> I see it coming. That's a great six from Mochi. Yeah, key. He doesn't have to crack. Yeah, which does he do? I think... Uh, There's definitely a loss of, to, by playing uh, a checker behind the anchor. Yeah. Because now when, he, when, when Dirk runs, now he has that builder, that attacker on the five point. He mm. didn't bury it. Good point, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess it seems natural to just go all the way. Why Why would we want to double it, falcon? Oh, he's looking at the double falcon play. When you yeah. come out with two to the outfield, here it leaves no Like force yeah, breaking no the shots. midpoint or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's just right. just seems better. 3-2, I think we're going to see a hit here, actually, just because everything else is so bad. Yeah, What's, what there's a safe do? play, 5-2 to two and 13-11. to Still 11. some shots. Yeah. Still leave some shots. You could reduce your blots and clean up to the five. But oh, yeah, look yeah. at the best play here. Okay, it's very it's yeah, uh, seven million points. Close. But the computer actually wants to clean up the seven point blot just yeah. for safety. Yeah, I think it's just a gamut reduction kind of thing. Yeah, that's not a good roll. It's no, not, not a six. All. It's not a three, or it's not, and it's not an ace. What <laughs> so if we just uh, made nothing. the seven and shifted the blot? Yeah, I like this. Yeah. Now when you're hit, he's kind of primed, so yes. it's just like, it's a little tactical thing, sure. And Mochi needs six. If he gets a six here, he's actually, okay, well, not it's, yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> yeah. And he kills his sixes on his own side of the board. Yeah. He's got spares to play with too, so If he can yeah, get a six, six here, he does get a okay. six. Is he getting greedy? No, you gotta keep moving here, don't you? What, there's is he going to bury a, a checker? That's the thing. It's, yeah. it's too costly to bury Slot. a checker. But it's just like, look, he's looking at it. Because if you can yeah. get that second checker on the bar, it's just so much time that you buy to roll six or sixes and yeah. get your back checkers free. So it's, it's like just, a tempo play. But It's a lot to hope for. Yeah, you don't want to. He wanna... has to not roll a four because all fours are going to clean it up or do better. Yes, and he and has then, to move that checker anyway next time and unless he rolls an ace. Roll the ace. Yeah. Yeah, he has to roll the ace. It's not often enough that happens. No. And this five to three is permanent. There's no undoing that. So, That's right. Yeah. Might even help you. I mean, advancing 16 to 14 also might help on some fours that come out to contain the checker. You know? I don't know. I guess That's right. Six, yeah, yeah. yeah. Four six, four five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you get hit by a double four, actually. Right now. By on the, yeah, by staying on the, uh, yeah, on yeah, the 16 yeah. point. And he finds this, yeah. Yeah, good play. Mm -hmm. I think the outfield coverage is, is actually a very strong argument. Yeah. Of course, also not... Six five, great challenge. shot. Great. Now shot. he could get greedy here and stay and wait for the extra shot. Four five, four one, four four. I'll punish it. That's uh, so quite so a lot. So some other fours are okay. Yes. Um, How many shots did you say he comes down to the nine point? Then it's four five, yeah, four, four one. Yeah, and four four in the and board. Four four is amazing. Or elsewhere, yeah. Yeah, so it's like five addition of a four four and, is super this good is anyway. It. This is the play that XG favors. It's yes. not by a lot. Because if you run, then you leave. Your containment's nothing. so good, though, but you leave nothing, yeah. You leave nothing, but you miss out on on that beautiful, good play. He yeah. basically leaves four shots to get that big upside by trying to hit builder. the second check. You have a much better chance of, like, closing the board here, too. And now he's going to think about this. I think there must be some wins for Dirk here, so it just, Ooh. I don't know, you just have to play on, typically. Yeah, yeah, he's a 75% yeah. favorite before the roll, Mochi, here. Yeah, that's which a, that's is a lot. not even close to enough, though. But that's that was a horrible roll. Yeah. Now he's 60 40. Yeah. Not a good fan from Dirk. Mochi wants a six, six and there's out, the great. six. Now, How, uh, no need to get greedy here. You're just gammon. four four. Yeah, you, you, you just run, I think. Yeah. Just four four. Yeah. Yes, just run. Well, if the you gammon stay back, value. It's one more shot. You still get the chase after That's the right. Makes Double sense. four still hits, right? Yeah. So it's, it's one more shot. 
and and you're not going to gain all that much on the gammon they your gammon value basically get cut in half because of the match score you only win three points not four points when you win a gammon what is this you're going to stay on the four four yeah. you give a four four small mistake by mochi but very small oh, oh yeah. the <laughs> joker oh my god oh. what a that was like the, the definition of a joker. <laughs> like last minute buzzer beater. I don't believe that either. It just makes sense to me. It's, <laughs> it's just one shot. That's fine. Oh. Mochi left that 2.8% hitting chance. He's got some weird edge case chances <laughs> of uh, winning a gammon still cracking the board with the six prime. If he can get the checker into that, into that slotter, like slotted point on the ace and get hit. Dirk would love to recirculate and win a little bit more. He's going to try here. This is probably going to be his only chance. He's likely yeah. to have to fill it in if it doesn't work now. He's going uh, And he it. gets missed, so. If he rolls small, is he going to cover? Probably. Oh, that's oh, the worst. Punished. Well, he's that's got to shift 6 to 5 to start, or 6 to but 1. But he to has start. to leave a fly shot. Yeah, 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 so of course. And it's just which one? Yeah. You shift, of course. So then, then you, you play, play 7, seven to, to 2. two. And pick, yeah. <laughs> And then the best one seems to be two seven one. to two. Well, that still leaves two one is the problem. Um, it leaves two one, but you gain when your opponent rolls a six one six two. Uh, then you can still hit him and try to win something. Maybe, maybe six two is actually not that big of a gain because you're already winning. Yeah. So, yeah, whatever. Yeah, this made sense to me. That though. was a buzzer beater from yeah. uh, DX Shiman. <laughs> Top four it from the par. Well, now he's like uh, doing okay to win two points and yes. win out this match. Oh, you know, yes. After yesterday, yeah. It's very important. Diek is actually leading in both the match and. Oh, oh no, sorry. He's not. He's match, still going to be behind in the match. But he needs to win. But he's winning. He hasn't lost it. <laughs> yes, 1.6 on versus 2.1. Yeah. Of course, it could change when we analyze it with the. Very true. With the high settings. Mm -hmm. Wow, these are very good PRs from both of them. I think it's still blunderless, right? Have we seen a blunder yet? I can't remember. I don't think we have. I think it's still blunderless. 75%. <laughs> we have our answer. <laughs> the match is not over yet. <laughs> That's going to be such an interesting statistic. We've we are discussing here whether they are above or below 50% chance of playing a blunderless seven-point match. So I took the under, and uh, Nick <laughs> took the over. He thinks they're favorites to play a blunder blunderless seven-point match. There we go. I think to average long-term under a three, yeah, you know, like, I mean, a lot of times, I don't know. It's unclear to me. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. Actually doing that usually like often has to look like a blunderless match. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just so difficult to not make a single blunder. Yeah. <laughs> then you just have to take into account that like sometimes the two of their blunders in one match. Maybe. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Sometimes you <laughs> get have a... none in the other one and they average yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, trailing four-way, three-way. This is an exciting score. He's going to start with the three-two down and play for Gammons. Yes, that's a, of course the right idea at yep. this match score. I call this match score Gammon Go Light yep. because it's kind of like the Gammon Go four-way, two-way, mm -hmm. but it's just not oh. quite as extreme. What a start for Mochi. Well, we're making oh, the four for sure. Oh, and what a decision. Yeah. Are we making the four for sure? No, look oh. at this. Mochi doesn't make How the do four. How do we not He's make the rack? Gammon, gammon save. I would have 22 and four is my play. And they're, so they're pretty close. Okay, yeah. This would be the right play at four away, two away. Oh, yeah? It's four away, three now. away, it's difficult. And I yeah. understand why Mochi made the play. I think he should have thought a little bit longer about it, maybe. Yeah. How's and his it time doing? It turned Does he have out some to reason be... to speed this up? Yeah, that's a little bit weird. He seems to have a lot of time. Looks like don't 336 really and maybe the other opponent yeah. has five something. Uh huh. But okay. this is a critical score, you know. There's a lot of yeah. equity being decided yeah. in this game. Yeah. Great shot from the oh, yeah. man. These twos are huge too. We're gonna go ahead. No and shots. No shots. No okay. shots. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, leading the race. Okay, that's fine. That's sure. a great play, Dirk. Yeah. Slightly ugly, but it's the right play, right, right thing to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is kind of like a mutual holding game. You, but the race is close, you don't want to get hit. Yeah. yeah, and because it's close again, I don't think we leave the blot on the eight. That's right. Yeah, you will this leave the fly shot. Yes. Balance a little bit. Okay, yeah. it's fine. You need flexibility still. Four one, we're going to put a spare on the eight. Why I not? think so, but you could also double slot a deuce and the three point. Yeah, are you dying to make points behind the anchor right now? Though? Yes. I'm not sure about that. It's yeah. very close. Oh, it's neat. two milli oh, point. Wow. Very close, apparently. It's wild. I wouldn't have thought about it. Um, it's just efficient to unstack the two So this uh, just plays to the deuce. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Mochi's just going to keep dodging uh, a seven over and over again. Leave that blot stubbornly. Okay. Oh. Ooh, six is a great shot There's for the him. crucial roll. It turned now do into need, yeah. a one-way holding game, not yeah. a mutual holding game. With a clear racing lead, but with that three-point, it should okay. be... You know what? Ah, no, no, sorry. I, I missed... What's the race here? Isn't he going to be way up? 21 yes. pips? So he's going to be up uh, 16 pips? This is a this is a cube because yeah. this is a gamblerless position, yeah. and this is again one of those positions where the, tra uh, the leader can double more aggressively than the trailer. Yeah. It's such an efficient drop for Dirk here because he's dropping and he's going to be four away, two away. 33% yeah. winning chances, a great score to be in for the, for the trailer. When he's sharp, this should be an easy pass for him too, I think. I expect him to find this by quite a bit. It's huge too. It's a, it's a money game take, yeah. but not a big one. You yeah, know? Yeah. It's, a, it's a small one. And it's one of those positions where XG actually overestimates the holding game side a bit. Yeah. So it... it overestimates Dirk's side here. This is actually something that yeah. I learned from Dirk's book, yeah, yeah. among other places, yeah. that uh, the recube vig is not too strong for the holding game player. Yeah. And since XG just uses a, a, a linear function yeah. to decide, uh, the, to, to calculate the recube vig, it ca it, this is just one of those positions that and it gets wrong. He takes it. Wow, this takes is, it. that's a big wow. surprise to me. I do feel for he some knew, reason... You know all this theory, of course. Everything uh, that he knows is like points to not doing it, kind of. And I just, I have this feeling that he's not playing his sharpest game today, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a take at money game. But at yeah. this score, he, for sure he knows that he has to drop a little bit more in the yeah. gambling's positions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, this is one that I could have seen him I'm in like... I'm surprised. Yeah, in Marbella, I wouldn't have imagined him just like snap dropping that. Maybe you know, Could like I've, I've seen him capable of that. In the contender so. tournament in Marbella, he he was yeah. just playing so strong and steady. Uh, yeah. He, I think he won was it twenty out of twenty three matches PR point. He yeah, won the PR name. point in twenty out of twenty three matches. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> twenty one for some reason, but yeah. Something crazy like yeah, this. Yeah. It might be twenty one. <laughs> Either is so. unimaginable. Now we have a position. It's not three is a little better, but it's easier. not that the uh, DX winning chances got that much worse actually because no, at least this is uh, really awkward. Yeah, yeah, it's awkward. Yeah, Mochi wants to the roll fives, something he's that out of five. Oh, so that's, that's his last five. Awkward. Yeah. At least he clears a strip point, but it's not the point he wants to clear. Yeah. Five four also awkward. Also awkward. I don't think we're splitting or anything. I think we're still just playing eight to four. Yeah, you're sitting put on your anger. That's for sure. You're down 40 pips before the roll. So it says, what's the best way? Is it to slot the ace point? It seems yeah. to be more efficient mm -hmm. to slot the ace point. Get yeah. your checkers working for you. And you also get to keep some flexibility by having three builders. No, sorry, you don't. <laughs> you only get two builders to the five point. But I guess that's almost true regardless. Yes, that's the play. Good play, Dieck. It's the simple one. And 4-2 is going to be safe for another roll. Yes. It just keeps looking ugly, though. Is he looking at giving, leaving a shot here voluntarily? No. Yeah. He's just looking at it, but quickly I think you start senses. to because you, you see what's coming, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, now he has it's to play a one-man holding game. Yeah, but two dead checkers behind, like we talked about before. Yes. The, the signal's there to think about it now. So oh, I think yes. It's oh, no. Okay. It, it, it's, it definitely is yeah. much better than of crunching. Yeah. It's forced right it's, here. It's kind of forced, yeah. Because but you I'm saying if it wasn't, then it's still like you're not so afraid of it. No. You're not going to get closed out here. Yeah. You know? it's, it's not a yeah. super weak one man holding game. Yeah. Like they usually are. <laughs> They're usually yeah. very weak, the one man holding games. But this one is not one of them also the gammon happens to not be that efficient but the five is going to force the issue and the uh -huh. four is going to come in too yes that's the only one that doesn't yeah. need a double shot yeah. by the way i call this end game contact not a holding game anymore oh and dirk's got an interesting decision oh here yeah 
Okay, Please. again, there's nobody in the world that I would trust more than Professor Schiemann <laughs> to calculate the, the, t the doubling point here. Yeah, he I mean, it's exactly. no question of a take. It's just too easy to, usually you're going to miss and just lose a simple game here. And so is not winning the match when you do hit yeah, he's worth got 13. more than losing the entire match when you're missed, right? Yes. Or when he's missed, and it's just so it's it's only one point that Mochi gains, and he gains two. So he's got to think it's about leveraging his cube like difference there. It's not too uh, difficult to okay. So so we it's see that close, it's a no yeah. regardless, but it seems to be oh thirty seven percent. It's close. It's close. Yeah. Thirty seven milli points, but thirty seven percent winning chances. Yes, and he's and still I'm, sharp enough to realize that this might be a cube. Yes, yes, you know, yes. He wins a third of games. Right? Yes, <laughs> it's just like crazy. Concept. But the the, yeah. the he can under underdog recoup here because yeah. he's not risking too much. Yes. He's yeah. risking 18.6%. Mm -hmm. It's not that's, one that's your four away. Yeah. That's your four away, one away match winning chance. And it's not as. But and he's gaining. He's gaining 40% because he gains from being two away, three away to winning the match. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's gaining 40%. So the risk over risk plus reward is basically 19 divided by 59. Mm. It sounds like one third ish. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. A, that's a very low doubling point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, way they're... way below. Uh, but that's of course that's your your last roll doubling point. Uh, so you have to take into account the volatility and all that stuff. The problem here is that Dirk hasn't closed out his inner board, which means that Mochi will have some return shots where he turns the game back around, mm, like yeah. the six one immediately from the bar just not wins the game many. from Mochi. Word, but but it's not too many. It. You can see in the numbers too, six two and a three. But had the is had he numbers, had the full closeout. Two of thirds, a little better than two thirds, and that's about his winning chances. So yes. I mean, he can still win when he doesn't hit this spot. He might not he, always he, clean it he's up. He's a little too. bit better than two thirds here. Yeah, well, because Mochi might not clean up after he misses too. That's true. That's yeah. that's right. Yeah, that's right. But had, had Dirk had had the full closeout of his mm. inner board, this would probably be a cube, because mm. then he seals the deal on all of his hitting numbers. And we should also remember that double sixes here is also a good number. Yeah. It 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 gives him. Uh, mm -hmm. He's an underdog, but at least he has some racing chances. Yeah. Another thing about it too, yeah. he's gonna send it. I think this is fine. Yeah. It's very reasonable. What you can never drop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's an easy decision. The other part, the other factor to think about in these two is that there isn't there isn't any gammon canceling effect, and and actually that might be part of why he wasn't. If he hits, he might still win a gammon. That's actually an interesting feature of this. Position that's too. that's that's true. Actually, so he cancels his own. Gammon that's true. That's true. Four. I didn't yeah. even think about that. That's yeah, yeah. a great point. Yeah. That might swing it back to being a no double. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I think I think yes. it's less about the winning chances and more about that possibly. Yes. You have to include the volatility of the position, and yeah. you have to include the gammon. Yeah. Rates as well. Yeah. But of course, he Very misses. Mochi throws a great shot. He's yeah. almost certainly going to win the match. And I the PR is completely unclear. I think Mochi will take the PR now as well. But it was such a small mistake. That it was a small it, mistake. I don't think it's going to change like the a major see, piece of the race. We'll let's see. Let's see if uh, Hussein, he's always a little bit uh, challenged in race positions because the yeah. players play very fast. But let's see when he has time. Yeah. He's going to show us the PR score. Yeah. And we can see what the PR is here. And remember, this is just the temporary analysis. We're going to yeah. be back after the match. We're going to well, show a graphic. 1.9 and 2.16. Oh, this yeah. could swing. Yeah, yeah. Easily. This is close. Yeah. This is going to go to the machinery <laughs> to see who wins this uh, it's PR point. It's good to get a sweat. Yeah. <laughs> they mm. will sweat. When they hear the temporary result, Yeah. they're going to sweat. Dieg is probably going to be relieved that he's now back in the game. Uh, playing his his usual A game, yeah. After a slow start, yeah, he needed that. He really did. He needs yes. the, just a confidence boost of knowing that he can play this one. You know, that's right. I feel like if he studied this, he might still be frustrated to see some of the things he was thinking about and kind of off on. Yes. Um, but but yeah, the result is going to matter a lot here. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And we even saw Dirk getting into some heavy match theory decisions yeah. like exactly what he's been studying oh. and writing about in his book so it's kind of like very fitting yeah <laughs> for him to go out and display his skills and sell his book yeah okay there's the handshake. Roll the set towards the end there but it was the wrong set not quite enough and two points up for mochi in terms of match winning chances and the pr is gonna look let's look at dx reaction here when he sees how close it is so it's either three one or four zero yes to start for mochi that's right might be the best start he's ever had yeah. in the finals here 
Um, Dirk looks neither surprised, neither happy, neither disappointed. Yep. Yes, we're gonna we're gonna ra uh, wrap up this match. It looks like a very close PR. Uh, we're gonna run it through the machine. So stay tuned to to view the final analysis result. It looks like it's very close. Remember to like and subscribe the video. That's the best way to support the Backgammon Galaxy YouTube channel and spread Backgammon throughout YouTube. And we hope you enjoyed all the cool ads we, and new products we have coming up. So yeah, stay tuned for all of that. And we'll see you all tomorrow for match number three. Are you ready to roll the dice? Now it's time for UBC Grandmaster Analysis. Okay, here is my latest book, Backcheck Strategy. And I chose one position from today's match. The score is 0-0. That means it is a first game. And the cube is already turned. Uh, white is Mochi, blue is the Dirk. And white is in a very good situation, like this. Now, white wrote 6-5. How do you play this one? Okay. All right, so white has a choice to leave the advanced anchor, like this. Yeah, this is great. And another choice will be just play safe. Yeah. Okay, actually, when we leave the advanced anchor, it's a very important theme in backgammon, and it's not easy. So, when beginners ask me, when, when, when I leave the advanced anchor, all right, my answer is simple, never. You never leave the advanced anchor. That's my answer to the beginners. But, of course, uh, sometimes, we need to leave the anchor. So maybe this is a situation. OK, let's examine the position. Uh, first, white is ahead in the race. So that's the most, that must be the motivation to run back checker. Second, white has a stronger home board, three-point board versus just one-point board. So if a hitting contest happens, White is a favorite. And the third, if white tries to keep the advanced anchor, yeah, especially this checker we call a semi-dead man. We don't want to create this type of checker because this checker is never be used to fill the important five point. So with these reasons, Amazingly, leaving the anchor, playing 29 is the best play here. It's very hard. It's very hard, but this is the right. And after that, amazingly, uh, Mr. Mochi found this fact. Let's say blue lost 4 1. Okay, usually blue is very happy to make the five point with hitting. That's a perfect dice. However, amazingly, with 4-1 for blue, making the anchor and hitting is the best. That shows leave, uh, for white, leaving this anchor is not too dangerous. Well, blue does not have many pointing on numbers because for, bl for blue, making, the, making this anchor is a priority against such a strong home board. Okay, let's make it uh, simple and uh, clear. White is ahead in the race. White has much stronger home board and other place is ugly. With all these conditions, it's better to leave the anchor. Did you get it? Do you like it? Okay, so see you tomorrow.
The UBC is produced by Backgammon Galaxy. Play among the stars.